Hey everybody, it's Captain Naps here with you once again with another tutorial video for the Embraer E-175. So far in our tutorial videos, we've gotten the aircraft uh, all set up for departure. We've pushed back off the gate, started our engines, and began taxiing. So we're going to taxi up to the runway and do the takeoff in today's video. Let's dive into the flight deck. First, before we get started, a word about taxi speeds in the Embraer. The normal taxi speed limit for the Embraer on straightaways is 30 knots, and for turns, it's 10 knots. Any faster than 10 knots in a turn, and the customers in the back really notice the lateral motion of the aircraft, so you want to slow down to 10 knots to take those turns. However, this is true on dry pavement. For wet or contaminated surfaces, you're going to need to slow down even more. Your maximum straight ahead speed will usually be 10 knots, and your turn speed will be a maximum of 5 knots, and this is all to prevent loss of control during uh, slippery conditions. So at some point during taxi out, the cabin crew is usually going to call the flight deck to signal that they are secure for takeoff. That is, everybody is in their seats, including the cabin crew, and ready for takeoff. Once this is completed, and when you're about one to two minutes away from the runway, you'll want to do the before takeoff checklist. Before we actually read the checklist, we'll perform all the items in the checklist, and then the checklist will just be a check at the end. So the first thing we'll do is a cabin announcement. Flight attendants take positions for takeoff. We'll check the brake temperatures to make sure they're green. In this case, you can see that they're actually not green. They're actually in the yellow, which means we have to delay takeoff until they get back into the green arc. Otherwise, there may not be enough brake energy left to stop the airplane if we need to project our takeoff. All right, so we're back in the flight deck. We've reset our aircraft and the brakes are now green. We'll do an ICAST check to make sure that there's no messages we shouldn't see here. We should have the appropriate takeoff power set here, including the Attix flag if we need it. And this is also a good time to do a fuel check to make sure you do have the correct fuel, minimum fuel for takeoff. And last but not least, we'll do the takeoff config check. Press and hold the takeoff config button. Press and hold the takeoff config button until you hear the readout. Either it'll either say takeoff OK or it'll say no takeoff and it'll give you a reason. Brakes, flaps, uh, part and brake, something. And so last but not least, you'll read the before takeoff checklist. Before takeoff checklist, cabin was notified. Brake temps are green. I gas checked. Takeoff configuration checked. Before takeoff checklist is complete. Once the uh, brakes have been checked to be all green on the checklist, then the second MFD can also go to map mode for in preparation for departure. So from here on out, things are going to happen pretty quickly, so we'll pause the takeoff throughout the uh, process here occasionally just to give you a quick uh, update on certain things that we've got to watch out for during the takeoff. So once you're cleared to line up on the runway, first thing you're going to do is you're going to get some lights. Just get around this corner here. All right, so lights, so you're gonna make sure that the strobe goes on. And that you've got the taxi side lights on as well. And after you've armed, after you've turned on the lights, you must arm the auto throttle. So we'll do it just here when we're getting to the runway, as we're entering the runway. We don't do it sooner because we wouldn't want it to accidentally trigger uh, if we have to give it a lot of power to get moving while we're taxiing. So we wait till we're almost at the runway. So lights on, auto throttle, armed. Once you're cleared for takeoff, you can turn on the landing lights. And away we go. I should note that a number of things that happen with the flight guidance modes after departure are not technically correct, and this is an early access version of the Embraer 175 still. I will redo this takeoff video in the future when the aircraft has been updated and the management system more correctly represents the modes of departure after takeoff. You'll note that on this departure, the aircraft automatically switched into flight level change mode and changed the target speed when it switched to flight level change mode, which should not happen in the real aircraft. So hopefully this will get fixed in a future update. So from here, the takeoff is pretty typical for a jet aircraft. You'll apply the thrust to 40% initially, make sure the engine stabilized with all the parameters in the green at 40%, and then you'll advance takeoff thrust. Once you get past about 50 degree thrust lever angle, the, thrust, the auto thrust will grab the thrust levers and bring them into the toga detent anyways. Unless you forget to arm the auto thrust, which does happen from time to time, and you can put them manually into the toga detent and arm the auto thrust after departure. 
Once you've applied takeoff thrust, you'll call check thrust. The pilot monitoring will check the engine instruments to make sure that everything is still green and that the N1 equals the rated desired takeoff power. The PM will then respond with thrust set. At 80 knots, you'll do a quick airspeed cross check. So the pilot monitoring will call out 80 knots and verify that all three airspeed indicators are indicating 80 knots and the pilot flying will respond with check. Reaching V1 and VR, the pilot monitoring will call V1 and rotate. The pilot flying will rotate the aircraft up to about 10 degrees initially at 3 degrees per second and then begin to follow the pink flight director bars from there on out. The flight director bars after takeoff will guide you to V2 plus 10 knots. Once you see a positive climb rate on the altimeter and the radar altimeter, the pilot monitoring will call positive rate, the pilot flying will call gear up, and the pilot monitoring will raise the gear. At 400 feet, you'll do one of two things depending on whether you're flying an RNAV or a non-RNAV departure. For an RNAV departure, the LNAV will automatically activate at 400 feet, and you'll just simply call NAV to indicate that NAV mode is active. Or if this is a non-RNAV departure, at 400 feet, you'll call heading mode, and the pilot monitoring will select heading mode. Once you reach the thrust reduction altitude, which is usually 1,000 feet, the pilot flying will call flight level change mode, and the pilot monitoring will select flight level change mode. Once the pilot flying has confirmed flight level change mode has appeared on the FMA, they will usually call autopilot on at this point unless they desire to continue hand flying. 1,000 feet is the minimum altitude for turning on the autopilot in the Embraer E-175 on departure. From this point forward, the aircraft will continue to accelerate now in flight level change mode, targeting the VFS speed, which we originally selected, in this case 194 knots. As you pass the different flap retraction speeds, you'll call for flap retraction. You'll see them as a little pink F on the speed tape. If you don't see the pink F, you can retract the flaps at the green dot plus 10 knots for each notch of flaps. Or if you don't have that available, you can use the flap maneuvering speed table located on the checklist included in the video description. The flap maneuvering speed table is a table of speeds that are safe to fly at the given flap setting, even at maximum weight. So the green dot and the F-bug speeds on the speed tape are generally more efficient and a little lower than the values given on the uh, table. However, if you don't have the green dot speed or the F-bug speed available, the table will keep you at a safe speed. So for the flaps one departure, we're going to have to accelerate to 210 knots before we retract the flaps, unless you have a green dot speed that shows you a lower value. Once the flaps have reached zero, we can call for the after takeoff checklist, which is very simple in this aircraft. After takeoff checklist. Landing gear up, slat flap zero, APU off, after takeoff checklist complete. And that's it, we finished the takeoff in the Embraer E-175. Now we can keep on climbing, turning ourselves on course, and getting ourselves over to our destination. So we'll talk a little bit more about cruise procedures, climb procedures, and descent procedures in the next video before we get on to the actual approach and landing in the Embraer E-175. Thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll see you guys in the next video.